The deer not only gave our ancestors its meat and its hide, but also a plethora of gifts. We are going to explore a lot of things that we can make from the body of a deer. And this list that we're going to go into is by no means exhaustive. These are items that you can make yourself, whether you're making them from a deer that you killed yourself or from a roadkill or from parts that you got off the internet, whatever the case is, you can make these yourself. Some of these items you could even find at a pet store like you could find a rawhide bone for making parfletch. Hide tanning is really at the center and probably the most useful part of the deer, but we're gonna see a lot of other very useful and amazing parts that were used by our ancestors. All of these items are made from a deer or a close relative of a deer. I'm really honored to be able to share them with you. Most of these things I have made, but some of these particular items are not mine. They're from Alex Kilgore, who's been kind enough to share them with me. I've given most of them away as gifts. <laughs> I don't have the collection that he has together, so I'm stoked that he um, was willing to lend them to me so I can share them with you. So this is backstrap sinew, and it comes from the backbone of the deer. And basically sinew is fascia. It's like all these fibers that are lined up together. And what you can do is you can break up these fibers that come like in a sheet and you can break them up into little tiny pieces. And this is what our ancestors used to sew with. This is basically like the first thread. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a pain in the butt to sew with. <laughs> It's constantly breaking and it's a pain in the butt, but it's really amazing that this material just comes straight from a deer. And the sinew is very different from, like this is actually bound with artificial sinew, which artificial sinew is actually dental floss, basically. It's like all these polyester fibers that are bound together and greased up with wax. Whereas real sinew, and by the way, this is a lot easier to sew with. Whereas real sinew comes from the backbone or legs, like the tendons right here in the legs of a deer. And so real sinew is really challenging to work with, but, um, but it's really cool. And it can be used for sewing and it can also be used for hafting. So like, This antler and stone knife is hafted together with this real sinew and with this pine pitch glue. The pine pitch glue has charcoal added to it to give it some body. We've talked about bone and we've talked about sinew and now I'm gonna talk about antler. So antler can also be used to make a container, but making an antler container is way more challenging than making a container out of bone, but it's pretty cool looking. And then here we just have a little corn cob stop for that container. So you might be wondering why I'm hitting these deer antlers together. <laughs> These are actually called rattling horns and hunters will use these to draw in bucks because when bucks hear the sound of antlers meeting, they think other bucks are sparring. And so they wanna go and be part of the fight. So that's what these use for, another awesome use for antlers is. This might be the most fun of all of the antler things. So these are like Eskimo, sunglasses and the idea is that if you're hanging out in the sun with ice everywhere and snow everywhere there is a lot of glare and there's so much sun in your eyes that it can really hurt and so um, a lot of northern peoples would make goggles like these which I can see you totally perfectly, even though you can't see me through them. And so it's a pretty ingenious way of um, using antler. And this is actually elk antler. 
So it's pretty awesome. But I couldn't help but show these because they're so cool. This is a tool that's used for making dry scrape buckskin. It's actually a fleshing tool for fleshing the hide once it's up on a rack. And we don't mess with a rack during wet scrape. It, the rack is a pain in the butt, honestly. It takes so much time to set up. But this is a really cool tool for, um, for fleshing a hide if you are using a rack. This is a metal awl, which honestly works way better than the than the bone or antler awls, but it has an antler handle. It's pretty easy and slick to get metal to go into antler. First, you drill the hole and you can use a primitive drill or you can use like a DeWalt drill <laughs> or Makita or anything like that. And you drill a hole and then you boil the antler for like 30 minutes and you take the antler out and right away, you sink the metal tang into the antler. And if you have that pilot hole, it should hold really, really, really well, as long as your pilot hole is slightly smaller than the metal that you're going to put in. And the antler has natural glues inside of it, which help to make that metal stay. It's pretty cool. This is an antler awl that I made, and it's just antler rather than having a metal tip. And like I said, this awl is not as useful as the one with metal. This is the case oftentimes when we're looking at primitive objects that it can be helpful to have a little bit of the metal age in the mix, but, um, but it's very comfortable and I've used it a lot. These are buttons made of antler. So these are my buckskin shorts. And as you can see, I've used antler buttons on them. And these ones I cut and sanded and polished to where they're really pretty. And antler buttons are like super cool looking and they are very functional. So you just slice the antler with like a hacksaw and then you drill two holes and then you have a really awesome antler button. This is another piece that's made from a close relative of a deer. This is a comb that I made from an elk antler. And so what I did was I scored the antler with like a burin stone. So I was like going back and forth and 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 back and forth. And then I broke the antler. Then I cheated and I used a hacksaw to cut the tines, but those could also be made from a burin. And um, I actually used a rasp to kind of take off some of the antler and make it more rounded so it'd be more comfortable. But um, you can like actually comb your hair with it. It's pretty awesome. Finally, we're going to talk about using deer hide. So you can use deer hide, whether it's raw hide or whether you've tanned it and made buckskin or made bark tan with it. So first I'm gonna talk about what you can do with raw hide. So this is a parfletch and parfletch was used by lots of native people in this continent. And here this parfletch has actually been decorated with various earthen materials. And it is pretty awesome. If you don't have plastic bags, parfletch is super useful. Although it's a little troublesome here in the Southern Appalachians because we basically live in a rainforest. And so this stuff can get pretty soggy. So now you can see how that could be used to hold all sorts of things. They used it to hold food. They used it to hold important objects. Parfletch is just really awesome. This is a pack basket that I made many years ago. And this, I used rawhide for creating the suspension system for the backpack itself. And I've taken this on hundreds of miles of backpacking, so it's a little worse for the wear, but you can see this system of like, hooked up straps to it. And then I used to have a belt set up on it too. And then the top of it is also rawhide. And again, 
it's a little worse for the wear, but I used to have straps that strapped from here. From here down to here and I could carry a bedroll on the basket. And then we get into things made of buckskin. So these are, this is one of my moccasins and it's a Southeastern style moccasin. It's pretty awesome. It's called a pucker toe moccasin because it has a puckered toe. And then this is a buckskin belt pouch that Alex made. It's really beautiful. And then you can make dresses, you can make pants, you can make vests, you can make jackets, you can make whatever you want to, backpacks, whatever you're thinking, whatever pouches, whatever object you think would be great to wear or carry things in, you can probably make it out of buckskin. So I encourage you to explore that. And one last little thing that I wanna share about the deer is that on this little buckskin pouch, these are deer toes. And so deer toes you can use to make a rattle for a baby. You can use to make all sorts of things. So check out the deer toes, they're super cool. Amazing, the gifts of a deer. I'm like so in awe of like all the things that our ancestors used to make from deer. And it, our ancestors like, all made these things. Like not just if you had Native American ancestry, like our ancestors all over the world used the gifts of the deer. Do you wanna learn how to tan hides? The Wild Abundance online hide tanning class starts in November. Check out www.wildabundance.net slash deerhides.